I've never told anyone what happened to me when I was 14. I guess I kind of always wanted to. My name is Max. I'm 25 now. So this is a bit of ancient history, I suppose. My grandfather passed away when I was 14, and my mother was his only child. He was divorced from my grandma and had never remarried or anything. So all the stuff you have to do when someone dies fell to my mom. He lived a few states away. So one weekend, we went out to his house so mom could go through everything and see if there was anything she or I wanted to keep before the estate sale. His house was pretty cool, really. He had acres of land, and there was a pond, and he had an in-ground pool, and the house wasn't like a mansion or anything, but it was way more than one old guy needed. Grandpa Ray had grown up super poor. His father was an alcoholic who couldn't hold a job and was abusive to his kids. Grandpa had a brother and sister, both of whom passed before he did. Grandpa vowed to never be like his father, so he stayed away from alcohol, and he worked really hard getting a doctorate and becoming a college professor and building a really nice life. Oh my gosh, and I turned to ramble. When we get to Lemon Belly. So we drive to his house one Friday and get there late. So we just crash. Saturday morning, we start going to the house, both of us picking things to keep. I found the attic and head up. It was a toodle jackpot. First of all, there's a box full of playboys from like the 70s and 80s. I spent a fair amount of the early morning flipping through some of those. There were some really cool clothes, some old toys, just kind of neat stuff. And then, I come across the chest, pushed back into the corner and covered with an old blanket. It's locked, but after searching some more, I find a key hanging on a rusty nail on the other side of the attic. It opens the chest. There's a little bit of disappointment at first. The chest was mostly filled with old newspapers and some manila envelopes with stuff like the house deeds and my mum's birth certificate and all that. But at the bottom of the box, tucked into the corner, was a small velvet bag. I took it and untied a stiff bit of string from around the opening. I tilted the bag out. And Lemon Belly fell into my hand. Okay, so I know right now None of you know who Lemon Belly is, but I'm going to tell the story the right way. I didn't know who he was at the time either. Inside the bag had been a bottle, maybe half the size of one of those old glass coke bottles. It was glass too, stopped to the cork, and looked as though it might crumble into dust as soon as it was touched. Inside the bottle was a dark amber liquid, too dense to see through. I turned the bottle in my hand and felt it shift. There was something floating within the dark liquid. I turned the bottle another way, and there was a tiny thump as a yellow ball slid through the liquid and came to rest against the glass. I mean, I thought it was a ball at first. I could only really make out half the ball. The liquid inside the bottle was so dark. There was another bit of string wrapped around the neck of the bottle and a small tag attached to it. On one side of the tag, what I assumed at the time was Latin, and I was correct, was Nulla Domus Hic. On the other side of the tag was English. Lemon Belly, it said in blocky red letters, written in a shaky hand, and underneath, never open. Obviously, I, teenage curiosity, had my fingers in that cork in a heartbeat. I would have pulled it open right then, and who knows how this story would have gone. But I heard my mother calling me. I set the bottle on a nearby shelf and hurried down to see what she needed. And then my mum kept me busy with this and that for the rest of the day, 
and I kind of forgot about the bottle. To be quite honest, it was the magazines that sent me back up to the attic on Sunday, just before we left. I stuffed a few in my duffel bag, and then, as I was turning, I saw the bottle and hurried over to it and dropped it in my bag as well. I didn't empty my bag for another week or so. School was kind of going rough, and if I can be quite honest. I was a chubby kid, and there was these three friends that gave me a lot of crap. That week, I also started having really bad dreams, like weird nightmares that I couldn't even remember the next day. But they would have me waking up in a cold sweat, or even yelling out once or twice. My blanket on the floor and my bed sheet twisted and wrapped around me. When I did get into the bag, it was the stash of the magazines in my closet. I pulled the bottle out and set it on my nightstand. I would have maybe opened it again, but I remember wondering what exactly that gross-looking liquid was and what the yellow ball could be, and I started to worry it would poison me or something. Maybe it would just be cooler to hang on to it and keep it on my table or shelf. A month or so after I found the bottle, I had a dream that I did remember. It sticks with me now. I can recall every last bit of it, as though it had just happened last night. I was standing in a strange room made of giant stones stacked upon one another. Behind me was an opening to what looked to be a desert. It was night, and I could hear the wind blowing. Before me, a raised dais with a throne of sorts. Sitting on the throne, a figure wearing a long cloak, the hood up to conceal his face. Tell me, young one, what do you desire? The cloaked figure asked me, his voice raspy and low. The bullying at school had only gotten worse. Joey, James and Chris won't leave me alone. I want them to stop, I said in the dream, stepping forward. You must free me then, the cloaked figure said. As he spoke, he stood, and the cloak fell away. The figure was much taller than the average man, at least eight feet, and was completely nude. Its skin was a sickly pale yellow, except for its jutting belly, which darkened to a lemony color. His face was hideous, folds of fat that jiggled as it grinned, its teeth sharp and its eyes small and black. It held a hand out to me, its fingers long and ending in curved nails, and looked as though they could cut through flesh as easily as a knife through butter. Free me. Yes, I said in the dream. I bowed low, and then I woke. I was standing in my room, holding something in my hand. I looked down, my eyes taking a moment to adjust to the dark. I held the bottle in my hand and felt a shock of fear roll through my system. I was looking at that yellow ball and realized it wasn't a ball at all. It was a belly, great and distended and yellow. Beyond the belly, no doubt, the rest of Lemon Belly, the liquid too dark to reveal him. Lemon Belly, I remember saying out loud. I had two fingers on the cork. I pulled. I expected something, but nothing happened. I let the cork fall to the ground. I held the bottle up. I could not feel the movement of an object inside the way I once had. I shook it a bit, but it wouldn't appear. Lemon Belly was gone. Somehow I fell back asleep that night. I dreamed again. I was standing now in a stranger's living room. The front door behind me opened slowly and I turned. Lemon Belly was there, one hand on the knob, 
stocking to get his ugly head under the door frame. You should see this, he said, looking right at me. The cold chills spread in my chest as I was overcome with fear. Was this a dream? It had to be. The whole damn thing had to be a dream, I thought at the time. Lemon Belly stepped past me in that dream, and I pressed myself back against the wall in an effort to give him as much birth as I could. Come, he said over his shoulder, and in a dream I was helpless to do anything other than follow. Lemon Belly moved so strangely, his movements jerky and unwieldy. He went up the stairs and I still followed. It was like he knew exactly where he was going. He moved down the upstairs hall to a door that was closed to the crack. Unease and dread washed over me as the yellow monster pushed the door open and stepped inside. In my dream, I was willing myself not to follow, but my feet paid no attention to my brain, and into the room I went. It was Joey's room, the leader of the three boys who bullied me. I saw him asleep in his bed. He was tall and athletic, and his two stooges did whatever he told them to. He'd been picking on me for years. I was torn, watching Lemon Belly move to his bedside. I didn't know what the creature was going to do, but I knew it wasn't going to be good. At the same time, I kind of wanted it. I wanted Joey to be punished. I wanted him to be hurt. Lemon Belly looked back at me, his pinprick eyes glowing in the soft light of the silver moon. Then he turned to Joey and opened his mouth. His jaw fell almost to his chest and then kept going. It dropped and dropped and dropped. And soon his mouth was a massive black maw ringed in sharp teeth. No, I cried out in a dream, but Lemon Belly did not stop. He reached for Joey, grabbed the boy with frightening speed, and was shoving him into his mouth before he had a chance to wake up Folly. I could hear him scream as Lemon Belly's lips came together, his mouth normal again. He was screaming from that gorged yellow stomach, screaming for help. I woke with a start. It was dark still, and when I looked at my phone, it was four in the morning. I slept no more that night. The next morning, Joey wasn't at school. That afternoon, our grade was called into the gym. We sat on the bleachers, and our principal told us that Joey was missing. He asked anyone for any information they might have. I kept my hand down. When I got home, I checked the bottle. Lemon Belly was still missing. I went to the bathroom, intending to pour the liquid down the drain. But something stopped me. I don't know why, but I just couldn't go through with my plan. I corked the bottle back off. That night, I had another dream. I watched Lemon Belly enter James's house and eat him as well. I was powerless to stop him. I didn't even try. I was worried he would eat me if I did. The next day, I feigned being sick so I could stay home from school. Around noon, one of my friends texted me to tell me they had another assembly, and this time it was James going missing. Apparently, the police were there this time, asking questions of his friends. Everyone seemed to think maybe the two boys had run away. I was the only one who knew the truth. I also knew that stopping Lemon Belly was going to fall to me. I couldn't go to anyone, not my mother, not the police. What would I tell them? I had to figure something out. I stared at the bottle for a long time. Then, finally, 
a possible answer came to me. I looked at the tag and translated the Latin. It came out roughly to, There is no home here. I had an idea, a wild one, but I had to try. That night I snuck out of my home. I climbed out of my window, thankful that my room was on the ground floor. I considered getting my bike from the garage, but I didn't want to risk lifting the door and waking my mother, so I had to go on foot, and I was worried I'd be too late. I ran for Chris's house, knowing that I would find Lemon Belly there. He lived nearby, thank God, but my heart dropped when I got to his house and saw that the front door was standing open. I stepped inside and shut the door behind me. I considered yelling out and waking Chris's parents, but I didn't know what they would say. If he was already gone, how'd it look for me to be there, in their home? A creak from the floor overhead. I'd never been here, but it was easy enough to find the stairs. I moved up then quickly, just in time to see Lemon Belly disappear through a doorway. I followed him. He sensed me, turning as he crouched over Chris's bed. Leave me, he snarled, but I shook my head. I tried to reply, but my mouth had gone dry, and the words I attempted died in my throat. I jammed my hand into my jacket pocket and pulled out the bottle. If Lemon Belly was scared, he didn't show it, but he did take a step toward me reaching one longer hand in my direction. I uncorked the bottle and held it in front of me. Now Lemon Belly paused, glancing down at the bottle and then back to my face. Suddenly he lunged forward and I leapt back, barely keep the bottle of bright and barely keeping out of range of his swiping claw. I slammed back into the wall in the hallway and turned and ran. Lemon Belly followed. I could hear him lumbering down the stairs, hot on my heels. I flew out the front door and into the street, turning to see Lemon Belly still chasing me. I will not be imprisoned again, Lemon Belly snarled. You will, I told him, holding the bottle forward. I said the Latin words. Lemon Belly roared and the bottle grew hot in my hand, so hot that I almost dropped it. There was a flash of bright light and then a popping sound, and Lemon Belly was gone. The weight of the bottle in my hand was different, and I slammed the cork home. I held the bottle up and used the light from the street lamp to confirm that the yellow stomach was there, pressed against the glass when I held the bottle a certain way. Through the liquid came one long hand pressed against the glass as well. I shivered. And that was that. I learned that night just what my grandfather had come to possess. Ultimate power. I would be lying if I said I never let Lemon Belly out again. There was a time in college when my girlfriend left me for another guy. He had to go. And so did she when she didn't come back to me. A guy who got a promotion over me a few years ago. He didn't deserve to live, did he? It's easy letting Lemon Belly free and then going and collecting him. He almost doesn't even fight me anymore. He never turns on me, never comes for me until I come for him. Maybe he's not allowed. I sense some sort of weird rules are at play here. Now that I think about it, he's never tried to hurt me. He always seems to be going for the bottle. All I know is it's nice to be the one in power.